All right, let's take a look at, um, we've had a breakout on the S&P this morning. Uh, so on a high value area, looking for a consolidation, a little um, cup and handle formation should be forming. We're going to wait for one. We had a breakout at the close yesterday. You can see uh, 1555. We talked about this, um, having these breakouts near the close when institutional uh, window dressing comes in and you get that those algorithms like to push the market up and down. Usually starts around um, 350 into the close, but you can see that clean breakout. The yellow trigger, when that when that comes up, you have a breakout that's happening in that particular market. Uh, you can see that uh, our oscillator below got into a stronger position. There's our stronger position. When above 100, we're in a strong position than the breakout, and the S&P is just getting a nice little uh, rally point. A market profile broke out. You can see we broke out of MP. So we're in a uh, nice little uh, imbalanced market. We were balanced, now we're imbalanced. So we're into an imbalanced market. You can see what happens when you get into an imbalanced market. This is what happened when we got that trigger by yesterday into the close. We got into an imbalanced market and you can see what price action likes to do. Same thing here, we're into a imbalance from a balance. So a balance market's when you're in between profile. This has been working since 1985. When you're in between low value area, big green, thick line, HVA, high value red, thick line. When you break out of that, that's balance when you're inside of it. That means you're in a the accumulation distribution right there, the control point, the most volume is traded. It's containing the market between value areas. But once you break outside that, you break outside of value, you get a lot of buy stops that are hitting for the traders and the algos and so on that are short, and you get this fuel one price to the upside. So that's when you want to look for your breakout levels uh, to hit. You want to see these yellow triggers to, to uh, start to moving. We've been really on fire on crude oil this week. I mean, just day after day, we have been just getting some nice uh, breakouts. We had a breakout just happened now. Breakout happened here at 6.42, almost 7 o'clock this morning. Breakdown, I'm sorry. We got into a weaker market. Yellow trigger form, and uh, we had a nice little sell-off, 74.19, a potential down to 93. But yesterday, just one after the other, just kept breaking out. Uh, this morning, here's one at 4 a.m. Here's one at 2 a.m., another breakout. Here's your yellow bar trigger short yesterday at noon. These are not some, uh, these have been some pretty good moves. You see that uh, that's what 46 potential down to um, 94, 50 tick move. That's $500 per one contract potential, or the micros $50 potential, one tenth of the big contract. You can see that it's just signal after signal on crude. It's been really moving around really nice. There's a signal 11 a.m. broke out. Another nice potential trade on a breakout. Uh, one before that, another potential breakout at 10 o'clock yesterday. These are all breakout setups uh, we sent over to you to review. What these are, are small cup and handle formations. Um, they're very, very accurate on continuation trades because we have a trend filter built in. That's our trend filter that's been back tested over 30 years. That is our zone, and this cup and handle looks basically like this. There's your, there is your handle. Here is your cup. There's your retracement. That's what we're going to look for right now in the S and P as we speak for the next setup. You can see it looks like a little cup. Once you break that handle, you see that nice little breakout continuation. It looks like a cup and handle formation. 
the algorithm automatically picks this up for us, displays it. So we've been have some really nice, nice setups. You can see on crude oil, there's another breakdown, another potential. 79 down to 40. Almost $400 potential there for one contract. Another breakdown, 6 a.m. You can see it's just one after the other in crude, just really cranking trades out. So just heads up, crude's been really active. Um, so nice little active market. So what we're doing, what we'll do is we'll look for um, we'll look for that this morning on the S and P. We'll look for a retracement. We're gonna look for a retracement here. So here's your handle. That would be your handle. We'll look for a retracement once they start forming red bars. It's going to form a formation like this. Once we break outside of that high handle, we should have a breakout again on the S&P. Hey, Derek, good morning. So our breakout level should come in at this level. It should automatically form. We we'll get a yellow trigger, and that should uh, generate a nice move for us uh, on crude oil. So another setup, so so there's only two types of trading we look for in the room. I mean, we're, we're in into a imbalanced market, which is, which we want to see. I mean, obviously, imbalanced markets is where it's at. You know, you want to trade markets where the buy stops, if you're above HVA or sell stops are getting hit. This is all the volume in the market. This is all the participants in the market. It's our roadmap in the market. It shows us where we have an imbalance. Hey, Sal, good morning. So we are in an imbalanced market moving up, looking for a cup and handle formation trigger breakout as we speak. So that is the breakout setup we're looking for right now. The cup and handle right now, we're looking for a cup and handle formation, yellow trigger breakout. All right, so watch out this morning. But you can see it happens on, uh, here's the NASDAQ futures. NASDAQ futures moves quite fast. But there's one, so th th these are breakout trades on the NASDAQ futures. Here's a breakout trade happened this morning a second ago. Breakout trade, breakout trade. But let's talk about another setup. Had a couple yesterday. It was a really, really nice setup so on the NASDAQ. And same way with the S&P. So when we're when we're trending up or trending down, so we have breakout trades, obviously these yellow triggers. We also uh, there it's also retracement trading. Retracement trading is so we have these two zones. We got my <clears throat> my 54 38 zone. When we close a candle outside our bar outside of that outer zone. Your trigger is going to be, and this is what you're going to have on this uh, particular strategy also, that's going to turn yellow for you, just like the breakout trigger does. This is going to turn yellow, and that means you're in a deep retracement, confirmation pull-in. Arrow will print right below the low of that bar. So what you're getting in your hands, we're putting this together for you. Gerald and I, you're going to have two things. You're going to have your breakout triggers on any market. And then you have your deep retracement trigger here. So the deep retracement trigger will let you know if you're in a full retracement into the zone. What I did is I removed all shallow retracements from the slingshots. There's way too many that were coming up. I removed them, and I only show the deep retracement. Why is that important? Because when you get deep retracements on these outer zones, you typically get a big push. It's just got to close one candle outside of it. Here's a short or one bar. So your trigger will be right here. It'll turn yellow. For the short, you can see these are, these are really nice looking setups because you're getting into the outer zone. But what you're doing is you're getting that outer zone with confirmation of a reversal, all right? So they're deep, deep retracements. So when you get into the outer zone here, 
that's a trigger right there. That's called a retracement. You can see that when you get into these, your trigger bar is going to be that reversal bar and the arrow will print right below it. Now the strategy will go along there. It will turn yellow for your indicator. Here's another one. It's going to turn yellow exactly when that candle closes back inside of that outer zone. The key is it's got to close one candle outside of it. And that's going to pull you right back in. Now this works on all of them, not just the uh, NASDAQ. I like NASDAQ because they're, they're, the moves are so robust. Here's another one. You can see the shallow. I removed these shallow retracements here, though. These are not going to come up on the update you're getting. I'm only going to print these guys right here because the strategy, I'm trying to cherry pick trades on the strategy. The best ones are full retracement zone so we don't deal with shallow retracements like this. These are the guys we want. We want the full retracement. Remember, there's only two trades you look for. There's your full retracement on the slingshot, and there is your breakdown on your zone break. So they will wait for a full retracement outside of the zone. Here's your breakdown, obviously. Those are very key in this shallow retracement, but you can see that what I'm talking about, when you get to the outer zone, there will be your trigger for a continuation short. Okay? So, like I said, there's only two types of now. Does it work on the S&P? Yes, yeah, same thing on the S&P. So the S&P, this was our, obviously our breakout, our last one. You wait for an outer zone break continuation. I like the NASDAQ, the, the, the markets that move quite fast on the NASDAQ because it's such a snappy market. Uh, no, they're going to be, you can see in there, they're on the outer edge. They'll be on the outer edge, Aaron, so it really won't matter. Well, where the breakout trades are not even close to the zones. You can see the zones. You, your, this is not even close to the zone, so there's no reason you need to even, even do a, a different color. You see what I'm saying? They're not even close to our zones. They're two different type of trades. Yeah, so you'll be able to tell the difference. The alert will go off on your computer on both of these, though. The alert goes off letting you know you're good to go.